Hey guys, welcome back to another interview here on Toned In Entertainment. Today we are at Gang Grail's Wrestling Asylum Cancer Benefit here in Danger Beach at the casino. And I'm joined by Steve. Hey. How are you doing today, sir? Good. How are you doing, brother? Good, good. Now, we talked earlier this week on Instagram, and yep. you said this was actually your first ever wrestling interview ever. Yeah, very first one, absolutely. I'm yeah. very excited for it. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Oh, yeah, no problem. You know, here on Toned In Entertainment, it's nothing but fun. We have a good time. So, none of the questions are going to be crazy. We're just going to have a good time. So, okay. first, I would like to know, if a train leaves New Mexico at 2.20 p.m., well, you're gonna have to think about the mile per hour. You're gonna think about <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, man? It's okay. It's okay. You could give any answer because actually I wouldn't even know the answer, so we're good to go. <laughs> three o'clock. Three. Three. Three o'clock. The answer three was three o'clock. So yeah. you got the first one right. I told you right. these questions were not gonna be hard. Just yet. enough time to get here for bell time, which is four o'clock. So. Right. Exactly. So yeah, there's a big show here tonight. We've got Alundra Blaze. We got Caitlin showing up. I mean, last time uh, Scott Steiner was here. So yeah, when you come to like Gangrel's Wrestling Asylum, not only you get to see great up-and-comers like you but you get to see a lot of like celebrities that oh, we yeah. grew up with as well oh absolutely it's uh it's been nothing but an amazing opportunity it's an honor to be on the same card as these guys uh it's an honor to see them to watch their work ethic on how they get prepared for a match and how they uh they do up there in the locker room so it's been it's been awesome it's right been awesome. now you're a young guy what was one of the things that kind of got you into wrestling why did you want to like become a wrestler man to be honest with you it's a long time ago when i was five years old uh i got into it because my big brother uh i actually watched him play with action figures that was my first wrestling match was him you know choreographing what's going on uh we had a big rivalry when i was a kid he was a bret hart guy i was a Shawn michaels guy oh, that's a big rivalry yeah i can still uh think about the day that uh, the iron man match i actually won a dime off of him because that's all i had i was so young so I was like, I bet you 10 cents Shawn Michaels is going to beat him in the Iron Man match. It was one of the greatest things ever, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, what were some of the action figures that maybe you guys grew up playing with? Uh, I think it was the Mattel ones, the ones that, um, you know, the little guys that, you know. Those uh, old Hulk, stocky, like there was, WWF yeah, there was one of Hulk Hogan that you only could do like a bear hug with yeah. where he would open up. Yeah. And then the ones that had like the military press that mm. you could flick them off and stuff like flip them off and stuff like that. Yeah. So You know, I actually have that Hulk Hogan figure, the bear hug one. Oh, really? Still in a case. Oh, really? Like in put away. Case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really yeah, I kept a lot of those. I kept them at my mom's house That's and awesome. I recently brought them out. I bought a display case and I put like a bunch of those old figures in there. They're really cool. Oh, dude, to have them still in the case though, man. Yeah. Not play with those things. Yeah. So. Oh no no, they're I'm sorry, they're not in the original packaging, oh. but they're in the display case. Okay. I, I should still, yeah. yeah, still that's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's great playing with those ones. Now Gangrel is known as uh, you know one of those great wrestlers from the Attitude Era, probably yeah. still one of the best times ever in wrestling. You know, uh, what is it like to uh, train with Gangrel? I mean, I know I've met him personally. I've interviewed him. He's like the nicest guy in the entire world. But when you see him in the ring, he's pretty harsh. So I'm just kind of wondering what he's like as a trainer. Um, there's there's many ups and downs with that one. He's honestly one of the greatest trainers I've been with. I've been with three separate trainers. Uh, hands down one of the best structures, uh, really cares about his students, really cares that we get the information he's trying to put down and he's not teaching just moves and just this is how you pull it off. He's under, you know, telling us about the psychology and why we do these moves and when we pull them out. Uh, he's honestly one of the greatest uh, trainers I've ever had and uh, Gangrel's Wrestling Asylum is absolutely recommended by this guy right here so yeah you know um i came to my first actually gangrel's uh, wrestling asylum a couple months ago mm -hmm. and i think one of the hardest things as a wrestler you know obviously you got to learn safety and technique and everything like that but i think the most challenging i mean correct me if i'm wrong is getting over with the fans uh yeah that's that's a tough one that uh is fortunately for me has been something that I don't have a struggle with and I don't know why I couldn't tell you why but it's uh that is definitely one of the most difficult things is getting over and actually connecting with these people because you are not want to connect I mean you do want to connect with your opponent you want to engage with your opponent but it's all about the fans that's why we come out here that's the reason we have a show is because people show up to watch us so you got to engage with those people man it's, it's one of the best parts well I can tell you I've been so far at two of Gangrel's um uh, wrestling presentations mm -hmm. and I've sat next to your fan club <laughs> both times so it was very easily for us to learn who Steve was you know the first time we came out we didn't know who you were sure. but within like a minute we're all in the in the uh, audience and we're all going 
Steve, 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 yeah. Steve. And I'm like talking to my girlfriend. I'm like, hey, this Steve guy, he's pretty good. Oh, you know, we're there watching you. But you know what? I think you, it's important to like have that fans and have that fan club. And you definitely do. And uh, it definitely got you over, at least with us, because we learned who you were right away. Well, that's amazing. I, I appreciate all the fans. I appreciate everyone that does the Steve chant that, you know, rocks with me the entire time out there. I'm giving it all to you. You're giving it back to me. So I really appreciate that, especially from you too as well. Uh, now, one of the questions I do want to ask you is, you know, we're here at Gangrel's Wrestling Asylum, yeah. and I thought growing up, one of the coolest factions was the Brood, okay? Oh my goodness. Right? How cool was so the, gr awesome. the Brood back they in the day? They were so cool. That fire entrance right. coming out of that circle, oh my God. Right, the music, I actually, music. you know, actually when I, I was in college when the Brood was uh, going on, mm -hmm. and I actually used Gangrel's theme song. <laughs> In one of my final projects, yeah. I know how to say that. Yeah, I get you. No, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I may have to pay a little royalty fee here whatsoever. Right. I'll donate to the cancer benefit there, there here, guys. Give, okay give a little bit back. <laughs> but let's just do a hypothetical situation, sure. okay? Say the Brood was able to reunite. Wow. You've got Gangrel, you've got Edge, and you got Christian, and they throw out a challenge to Steve in any two opponents of his choosing from any time period, wow. who would you grab as your two guys to go up against the Brood? Wow, that's definitely going to be a tough one. I cannot go anywhere without my partner, T.C. Reed. Definitely got to bring Trev Dog over there with me. So that's one of them. To be this, to be honest with the second one, just because he's had a lot of run-ins with these people, probably have to go with Chris Jericho. Okay. He's on top of the world right now. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a ton of people that I could put in that place. Don't get me wrong. But I'm going with Chris Jericho. Okay, I love Chris Jericho right now. I mean, there's definitely been such a resurgence uh, in professional wrestling game. I think the interest now has gone, like right now it's ready just to go right through the roof. I mean, you've got so much. You've got Raw, you got SmackDown, NXT, Impact, and now AEW. And AEW is doing some really amazing things. And Chris Jericho is definitely leading the way right now. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful time, beautiful time to be a professional wrestling fan. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's so amazing. And now... You know, just speaking of like, you know, everybody knows professional wrestling on TV, but there's a huge independent scene that I think a lot of people like myself haven't been introduced to in a long time. And I remember going to independence back in the day, there was a FOW and they'd be at the Davey Rodeo Arena. And to be honest, it was kind of like the matches were just kind of like a bunch of old timers oh, wrestling yeah. and okay. it, it wasn't very exciting. But I think the independent scene now is like a 180 from where it used to be. And I think people are really missing out if they're not checking out their independent shows. Cause I think we're getting to see not only like a lot of like really good old school people, but a lot of up and comers like yourself. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And it definitely is an amazing time for all wrestling, including independent wrestling. Uh, down here in the south uh, side of Florida, we're definitely trying to take over Gangrel's Wrestling Asylum. We're trying. Uh, so we need the support. But uh, it's, it's a great time to have independent wrestling anywhere. And like you always say, you get your best bang for your buck, about $10 to $15 a show. This one's free, donation-based. So, I mean, you can't miss out. You got to see it. It's a great fun on time we put on a great show yeah you sure. can't really ask much more i mean yesterday like uh my girlfriend and i we went to two movies yesterday okay. and it's like you know one of the movies was really good the other one was just okay mm -hmm. and it's kind of like you know you spent more money right. at a movie mm -hmm. than you would come into an independent show where you get to see like great action so i think people are really missing out if they're not checking out these shows i agree totally and like i was saying earlier the fan engagement engaging with the fans and being there you get a lot of that with these shows so it's awesome it's awesome to have you guys uh, be a part of it thank you so much for supporting and uh yeah you can't miss out on a gwa show that's for sure now the last question before we let you go because we know you have to get ready for your match today here at gangrel's wrestling asylum is Toned in entertainment, we talk a lot of pop culture. We love wrestling and comics and movies and video games, everything. Um, does Steve have a very, very uh, guilty pleasure movie? Some movie, you know, okay. that you just kind of kick back, you can laugh, you can have a good time okay. with? Well, uh, when you say guilty pleasure, is this something that you're saying that I would be embarrassed? If, I, okay. if someone caught me. Okay, let me give you an example. Okay, one of my favorite movies of all time is The Goonies. Okay, love, love The Goonies. Love Terminator it. 2. Great. But maybe a guilty pleasure movie for me. I don't know if you've ever seen it. There's a movie called The Wizard. Oh, yeah. Where the kid goes to California. Yeah, absolutely. I can put that movie on any time, really? but I would yeah. never tell anybody that's right. my favorite that's movie of all time. Win. Yeah. Uh, I've set up a couple of these. I've kind of prepared myself. I love your channel. Support the channel. You got to do it now. Yeah, do he, it now. See, he knows the ending. Know. You got to go now. You got to do it now. <laughs> uh, I'm honestly going to say I got two ninja movies on the back burner, three ninjas. 
it's a little embarrassing to you know say you like Three Ninjas, but that movie, I just love it. It's so funny. It's free on YouTube right now. I don't know if that's a thing, but there is there actually yeah, some movies that some are free. Are, yeah, 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 so I can pop that in any time because of that. And then I'll probably say also another one that's free on there is Surf Ninjas. Don't know if you know either okay. of these ones, but they're great movies. They're hilarious. The bad acting, I, I love it, man. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. I know. Uh, speaking of bad acting, I know Hulk Hogan. I believe was in one it of those movies. One, one, yeah. Yeah, it was like Three Ninjas at High <laughs> Noon or Mega Mountain or something like that. that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, definitely one of my guilty pleasures. Was probably one of the, one of those movies. All right, sure. all right. Thank you so much, Steve, hey, for joining hey, me here man. on Toned In Entertainment. And guys, you know what to do. Hit subscribe so we can bring you more great interviews like this. Do it now. Subscribe to the channel. Do it. Go now. Do it now.